Hello financial investors and welcome to the channel. My name is Brent and today we are going to be doing our stock market weekly recap for the 13th through the 17th of April 2020. We're going to go ahead and start off by taking a look at what was posted over on Facebook this week. We're going to go ahead and cover the four main indexes, changes for the week, lots of positivity out there and hope for the upcoming weeks and future. We're also going to be taking a look at stock futures here on Friday evening and this may not be what the market will open on Monday. We'll know as the market gets closer to opening where the market's kind of going to be moving towards. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500 performance for the week. I also want to go ahead and show you a couple positions that are positive and how much they are positive year to date. And you can kind of see how these have benefited during this time frame. We're also going to be looking at financials, home builders, semiconductors, oil, taking a look at the dollar, silver, gold, bonds, mortgage rates, and bond yields. So not too much information. It seems like a lot of information, but I like to condense these down to about 10, 15 minutes. These are just weekly recaps I like to do in order to keep track of what is going on currently in the market. Right now, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but We'll kind of continue on from here. So if you are brand new to my channel, have not yet subscribed, would really appreciate if you do hit that subscribe button below. If you have any comments or questions at any time going over this video, stock market, dividends, or just any other question, drop it into the comment section. I do read and reply to all your comments. And give this video a thumbs up now, that way you don't forget later. And let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so on Monday, I published a video over on the channel going over four stocks I'm planning to buy. I believe two of them are going ex dividend here in April. And then at the time, I didn't see any other positions I wanted to begin dollar cost averaging into at this time. So I went ahead and added into positions that are going ex dividend in May. And all four of these positions are currently down here in the short term, but are showing some upside potential. Obviously, you know, as the market recovers sometime in the future, and stabilize we should see some recovery in these positions as well as continued dividend income and growth for the future now i didn't put that and share that over on facebook so i must have missed that on wednesday i published another another video with m1 finance i went through the process of recharacterizing my ira deposit for 2019 towards a roth ira that means that i basically had to notify m1 finance that I didn't want the contribution of $560 to be counted towards the IRA and it said count towards the Roth IRA. I went over some of my issues doing this process and how it'll kind of affect me long term as far as tracking the performance of my portfolio going forward. So check out that video if you have not seen it. I also posted an article. I just got my website back up and running. I went through an issue with my host where I lost my hosting service. I forgot to renew it. And then by the time I finally did get it renewed, it had already, you know, I lost everything on the hosting. So I do need to go back through and set everything back up, make it nice and you know, readable, but I did cover a new article, Best Online High Yield Savings Accounts. I just went through here and updated this yesterday. So currently CIT Bank, this is one I am currently using, they're offering a 1.75% annual percent yield. So if you aren't currently getting anything out of your income, out of your cash sitting in your bank accounts, check this one. This one has a $100 minimum to open with no monthly fees and it gives you a very nice rate. I did get an email from Marcus that they lowered the rate from 1.7 to 1.55, so I adjusted that one down. Okay, and jumping back over into the tab here, I believe the only other thing here I posted was on Thursday, stock market got a lot of hope injected into it with the potential that there is a good push from Galeed as their drug trials have showed you know positivity they're showing that some of the in fact the patients are recovering and getting off their respirators and that had really popped the market up i believe galid kid came out themselves saying that you know what the article that had been posted everywhere they're kind of mis misguiding misguiding readers and investors but 
that did not stop the stock from continuing higher and that also played a part in moving the stock market a little bit higher as well and then i believe on thursday after hours president trump came out with this plan of how they're going to be reopening the economy within this uh this upcoming month and that is what's kind of giving this whole market some hope and that's what the market is moving on right now it's just the idea of hope so i did post another screenshot here haven't really been posting too much on my instagram and i don't know why not but i did post a picture updating of the portfolio here it's sort of a big disconnect from the indexes we had my portfolio up on friday roughly 3.28 percent the indexes were up 2.65 2.95 and then we had the nasdaq lagging really far behind at a 0.77 percent and that was on friday but if you have been following the markets the nasdaq completely blew the other indexes out of the water for the weekly performance which we'll, we'll cover now so let's go ahead and jump over into the s p 500 in the other indexes and we'll go ahead and cover their information here now so the s p 500 this week put on 3.04 percent in a time where there's 22 million individuals out there unemployed and unable to get work there's everyone sort of quarantined inside of their homes unable to leave to go and just do you know whatever they would like to do you can go to the grocery store but it's essentially if you're not doing anything essential you do not need to be out and about so monday we did go lower about 1.01 percent market just immediately shut up on tuesday i don't know if there was anything specific out there i know we're kind of going into earnings season and i I think that is when the trend line, I don't have a graph right now of the trend line of what's currently going on, but we have started to see less t uh, individuals testing positive on a daily basis. So that is showing good signs that maybe the yield, uh, the curve is starting to downtrend. Wednesday, we lost some of those gains that we picked up on Tuesday. And then Thursday, we had a nice rally. We begin on in the during the process of thursday not a whole lot happened you know we closed up 0.58 percent but after hours that's when the announcement of the glead sciences went off that pushed the market higher also president trump's announcement of wanting to reopen the economy and the steps that he would take in order to get it done i know a lot of other states such as mine oregon have also announced their plans to begin reopening pieces of the economy so that, that's a whole lot of what is going on right now. I don't think a lot of individuals are still going to be wanting to go out with the whole scare that was put on anyone. You know, I don't usually leave my house as it is during this time frame. You know, wife and I and the kids, we go out on bike rides just ourselves. But we don't go out to malls and high crowded social areas so i don't think it'll change a whole lot from what we currently do but it'll just be nice to know that there's not some crazy thing going on out there so the dow jones this week basically playing the same exact role here down on monday down on wednesday nice recovery here on thursday after hours moving higher put on nearly three percent here on friday not you know still a couple thousand points away from highs about five thousand points off those highs but look at how much we have moved and this 8,000 point bottom just happened within a month ago if you take a look at the one month performance here back in about midpoint of march is when the s p uh, the dow jones was trading at 18,000 points and here we are now today up almost 6,000 points off those lows and just 5,000 points left to go. Now, I think there's a lot of hope out there going on, and I don't know how it'll kind of go on in the future. There's no really way to tell if the trials are going to go well, and we do see a sharp drop off off this. Let's just, just be sort of forgotten in a year. But if this sort of hides itself and comes back in the fall stronger than ever, you know, then the economy could be shut down again this time for a prolonged time as individuals are a little bit more scared to reopen early too early for whatever you know for causing the same effect again so nasdaq here we go so the s and oh, 
the Dow Jones was up for the week 2.21, S&P 3.04, NASDAQ blew them out of the water, up 6.09%. So this is showing the NASDAQ was up 1.38%. So I use a different, you know, I'm, I'm using an QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ, so it's not an exact one for one. So here, this one is showing us up 1.38% on Friday. But we can still see a bit of a disconnect here between the indexes up 2.68 on the day, 2.99 on the day, and the NASDAQ up 1.33. And that was just because a little bit of relief. You know, this, the index itself has been chugging higher day after day. Only red day this week on Wednesday. So for it to take a break here on Friday, not move as high as the rest of the index is completely fine. It is just 3.59% from... Uh, you know, year-to-date lows right now. The Russell 2000 five-day change, it is down 1.41%. This is some of those small mid-cap companies still not trusting what's kind of going on out there. While individual, you know, the governors and the president may want to open up the economy, a lot of these businesses aren't in the position right now to begin bringing back their employees. You know, even if they, even if you know, the higher-ups want to reopen the economy. Do individuals really want to make their way back out of their homes in this current condition? Or are they going to want to continue to shelter in place? So I think a lot of that will kind of play out in the future as well. So Russell 2000 down 1.41 on the week. Here today, this one's still down 26.33%. Stock futures are currently negative. Nothing here is really, you know, it's, it's flat. That is because... You know, it's Friday, it's almost 2 in the morning right now, actually, on a Saturday, but we really don't know what's going to happen, what sort of news will get pushed out prior to the markets opening on Monday. Well, as we get closer to Monday opening, we'll see the stock futures begin to either go negative or positive on a better scale. So, for Friday, we can kind of see the one day, Amazon did lose a little bit of steam there, but it had already been chugging higher. Here today, it's actually positive by, I believe, almost 20, 30%. We'll take a look at that here in just a second. But you can see some of the strong sectors out there, really nothing crazy. You can see some of the companies that hadn't been affected too much by this so far is Amazon and Apple. And they are currently negative here on Friday. But a lot of the other positions here are kind of green as they're sort of hope maybe cash moving out of Amazon, cash moving out of Apple, moving into Google. We can also see Netflix down 3.69. This is not a pullback here. This is just a tiny, tiny, you know, movement. And Netflix is overbought. You could say it's overbought in the, in the short term anyways. So here is the one day performance, the one week performance. We can see financials getting hit pretty hard in the one week. JP Morgan, they came out with their their earnings this week. Bank of America, Wells Fargo, lots of earnings coming out there in those financials. JP Morgan down 7.38. Bank of America down 6.36. Wells Fargo down a whopping 14.52%. I believe JP Morgan was down 70, 80, you know, 70 to 80%, I believe, year over year for the same quarter. So big hit there on the financials. And the other sectors doing pretty well. Check out. Amazon for that one week performance. Yes, they took a bit of a cool down on Friday, but overall massive movement to the upside. Johnson and Johnson and many other the healthcare pharmaceutical companies just blasting off to new highs. Now take a look. This is interesting. The year to date performance. Now as we are sheltering in place, as we are staying at home, all these individuals, all these businesses, you know, you can really take a look at some of the companies that are doing really well during this time frame. Microsoft. We use a ton of Microsoft products out of my work from the Windows system, the I, you know, the system operating system. We use Outlook. We use Office 365. We use Teams. We use a bunch of their services in perpetual licensing for our servers. So Microsoft is just getting p continued perpetual income from. You know, small business, large businesses, all businesses of sorts. Adobe, CRM, Salesforce, Oracle. We also have AMD for their processors. Amazon, you know, individual, you know, that Amazon actually had to close their new, uh, they're no longer taking new customers for their produce or, you know, when they're delivery at home, they're not no longer taking new customers. So big movement up there as individuals are staying home, they're having more time to Netflix and 
recap on all of their missed shows. PayPal, Eli Lilly. So you can see some of the biotech Galeed Sciences up a whopping 30% along with Vertex and Biogen there. So really a nice, nice performance there on the individuals here year to date. Financials, we already saw them, five day change. This ETF is down 4.17%. It did make up a good chunk of it on Friday. You know, this was down what almost 10% this week. It wasn't until on Friday or Thursday after hours, and that hope came out there and kind of sparked this up. Imagine if they didn't have this. They would be down roughly 10% on the week. So, semiconductors, this is your NASDAQ pieces here at 4.83. Home builders down 3.11. And oil got whopped this week, down 15.76%. I actually figured oil would be doing a lot better with the deal between Russia and Saudi Arabia. And OPEC, I believe, is also in there in the mix as well. So, you know, hard to tell where oil will go through. I've, I've seen a lot of investors discussing oil stocks and oil as a whole, buying into it, thinking they're going to be buying up some bottom, but it continues to fall. So, you know, I still think this $4 range is at a pretty good safe point. You can see the low here is $4.03 for the 52-week low. The dollar also trended higher this week it did make a bit of a, a dip here in the early week and then begin a trend higher it's now sitting at 99.72 it did crack a hundred dollars here on thursday you can see 117 and 121 right there on thursday friday silver down this week 1.39 percent dive investors are getting more confidence in the market equities you know stocks they are moving their cash from gold and silver and bonds back into the market, back into equities, believing that this market will move higher. So we have gold also down 0 0.10. Not too bad there. Uh, maybe some investors are a bit edgy about jumping, getting back into the market. And bonds, 0 0.09. Bond yield for the 10-year is still sitting pretty low at a 0.65. I know a lot of investors are looking for this one to move over 1%. For the 10-year yield, I don't know if we will see that until we have some uh, rising rates. And mortgage rates did not change at all from one week ago. They remain the same at 3.58%. Last week, they are at 3.58%. So there you are. That is our stock market weekly recap for April 13th through the 17th, 2020. If you guys did enjoy this video, definitely give this video a thumbs up. If you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you do have any questions at all going over this video, stock market, dividends, drop it into the comment section below. I do read and apply to all your comments. And thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Let me know what you think the market will do this upcoming week. You think we'll kind of have a bit of a cool down, see where we are going to go in the future. Or I think we're really going to be looking at earnings. You know, how has one month affected earnings? That's going to be playing a big part, especially as we go into second quarter. If this thing draws out and businesses continue to stay closed, I think we'll have an interesting second quarter here in 2020. So that is it. Thank you all for tuning in. I will see you next time. Have a great day. Bye.